Okay, so the Razer Blade 14 is back, and now it's with AMD processors. Along with that, there's options for the Full HD and a Quad HD display with up to 3080 graphics cards. All of this is in a chassis that is less than 3.9 pounds and 0.66 inches thick. So Razer is maintaining the same look as the 15 inch blade with the flat design and squared off edges. I think it looks great, one of the best designed laptops currently on the market in my opinion. The build quality is excellent as we've come to expect from Razer and the black anodized aluminum chassis feels very rigid with nearly no flex and a perfect fit and finish all the way around the lid and body. Now this finish is just as much of a fingerprint magnet as it's always been. I feel like this many years later, Razer has to be aware of this complaint. It doesn't take much to make this otherwise premium looking product appear grungy and neglected. And it's not like it wipes off easily either. I have to use alcohol wipes to get the chassis to look clean again. Razer could easily fix this by just offering a white version, so hopefully they'll give us that option soon. You can open the lid with one hand, and once opened, you are presented with a vibrant and sharp 14 inch Quad HD screen. I have to say, after using the 1080p screen on my G14, I immediately noticed how much sharper this panel is. Though, I do think 1440p on a 14 inch laptop is a bit overkill and may not be worth the trade off in battery life. Razer does offer a 1080p 144Hz option exclusively on their website. The panel isn't the brightest either. My unit is measuring at just 283 nits of max brightness. Still, the colors on the display look great, covering 99% of the sRGB, 87% of the Adobe RGB, and 89% of the P3 color gamut, which looks much more vibrant than the G14 display. The 165Hz refresh rate makes navigating the operating system feel fast and responsive. It's also fast enough for competitive games. My unit also doesn't show any signs of backlight bleed or ghosting, something that was an issue for me in previous generations. I do wish that the screen had a 16 by 10 aspect ratio for content creators, although I do understand this was created for gaming in mind, so it does make sense that they would choose 16 by 9. The bezels are very thin on the left and right side, and only slightly thicker at the top where they are housing the 1 megapixel 720p webcam with the Windows Hello IR sensor. The camera doesn't look very good, but at least there is one for those who need it. Moving down to the keyboard, there is a per key RGB lighting. Razer has the best keyboard lighting. The backlights are bright and even, and with the Synapse software, you can customize all the effects and color combinations. Supported games will highlight keys that are relevant to the actions that can be taken in game, along with other effects that coordinate with the on-screen animations. Overall, I love the aesthetics of this keyboard, the layout, the font, the lighting. However, I wish the keys were a bit more raised and had more travel. Nonetheless, they are comfortable to type on. Below that is a large Windows Precision trackpad. It's very smooth, responsive, and accurate, has a very satisfying click to it. Only complaints would be that my palms do begin to get uncomfortable after a little while when resting on the sharp edges of the chassis, and the palm rejection is not very reliable. I've had few misfires during gameplay because of it, and there's no preset macro to turn off the trackpad. On the left there's a power connector, a single USB 3.2 Type-A port, a USB 3.2 Type-C port, and a 3.5mm headphone microphone jack. On the right there's an HDMI 2.1 port, another USB 3.2 Type-A port, and a USB 3.2 Type-C port. Both USB Type-C ports support charging and DisplayPort connected directly to the GPU. As well, the HDMI port is also connected directly to the GPU. There are not a lot of customization options right now. You have the option between a Full HD 3060, a Quad HD 3070, or a Quad HD 3080. I chose the 3070 variant as I feel that's the sweet spot in this lineup. All the configurations come with an AMD Ryzen 5900HX, 1TB SSD, and 16 gigs of DDR4 RAM. It appears there's only enough room for a single SSD, which is typical in this form factor, and the RAM is soldered on, so there's no upgradability there. It is understandable when you see how much room the vapor chamber cooling takes up, nonetheless, it is disappointing. The performance on this laptop is seriously impressive, especially considering its size. Most graphically intensive games aren't going to hit that 165Hz max refresh rate, still all are running at very playable frame rates. During gaming, the CPU is pulling around 40 watts and the GPU around 90 watts.
This laptop also has the option to turn on AMD's boost mode, which dynamically lowers the resolution for extra performance. There's only a handful of games supported at the moment, and I only saw very small improvements over the few titles that I tested. You can get extra performance by using an external display, as the two USB-C ports and HDMI 2.1 port are connected directly to the GPU, and there is no MUX switch for the internal display. This laptop could also serve as your only gaming device. Hooking it up to a 4K TV can give a console-like experience when you want a game from the couch. However, you may need to drop a few settings if you want to achieve 60 frames per second. The CPU does get hot. I've seen it reach 91 degrees Celsius. This didn't affect my gaming experience as there was no thermal throttling. The palm rest and keyboard deck never got uncomfortable either. So the vapor chamber and new fan design seems to be effective keeping those areas of the laptop cool. The area above the keyboard deck does get burning hot though. I tried gaming on a laptop stand, which didn't really help much, so you don't want to touch that area until the laptop has cooled. On the balance profile, I didn't find the fan noise to be terribly distracting when gaming. They did become audible, yet never really exceeded 57 decibels. On the other hand, during typical usage, they are completely silent, which is a really nice change from the Intel Blade, where the fans were basically running all the time. Inside is a 61.6 watt battery, and during typical usage, I am seeing around 5-6 to six hours of battery life. This is on battery saver mode with 50% brightness. The 1080p version would probably yield better battery life, but I don't have that configuration to test myself. Pricing starts at $1799 for the Full HD 3060 option and goes all the way up to $2799 for the Quad HD 3080 option. I think the middle option, the 2199 3070, is a sweet spot, so that's the one I would recommend. Overall, I'm really happy Razer moved to AMD. These CPUs are clearly more powerful and efficient when compared to the Intel processors in the Blade 15 from earlier this year. There are some compromises, such as the soldered memory, but nevertheless, this is still an impressively powerful, compact gaming laptop, and the most powerful 14-inch laptop available today. So leave a comment below. Let me know if you want to see a full comparison with the G14, and let me know if you enjoyed the video by giving it a like. Thanks for watching, I hope to see you in the next one.